Welcome back to the Public Health Academy. It is a pleasure to educate you on didactic material that pertains to the field of public health. In this quick video, I will discuss two important concepts, risk and risk ratio. The learning objectives are as follows. Review of contingency tables, define risk, define risk ratio, explain risk ratio equations, and walk through four practice problems. This is a quick review of contingency tables. If you would like to learn more about how they are constructed, kindly review the video labeled contingency tables. Contingency tables have four categories based on both the exposure and disease status, along with their respective total columns. Contingency tables are used to calculate measures of associations, such as risk ratios, rate ratios, and odds ratios. As public health professionals, we are concerned with a population's overall health status. This can be on the community, state, or national level. Some examples include the health status of African American women living in Brooklyn, New York, and young children ages 0 to 5 living in the country of Nigeria. When we are analyzing a population's health status, we need to take into account risk ratios and or exposures that can make them susceptible to different illnesses. An important term that is discussed in each of the five core public areas is risk. Risk is defined as the probability of a disease to occur in a defined population. Please do keep in mind that we can calculate the risk of developing an illness in the exposed and unexposed group. An example of an exposed group are individuals who smoke cigarettes. Another example of an unexposed group are individuals who do not smoke cigarettes. As indicated on the slides, to calculate the risk in the exposed, it is illustrated by the equation A divided by A plus B. To calculate the risk in the unexposed, it is illustrated by the equation C divided by C plus D. A risk ratio is a measure of association that compares the risk of developing an illness among two groups. To calculate the risk ratio, we divide the risk of developing an illness in the exposed group by the risk of developing an illness in the unexposed group. The slides show the equation that is used to calculate the risk ratio. So this is our first practice problem. A group of researchers from Boston Medical Center conducted a prospective cohort study to investigate the association between sugary drinks and the risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Researchers selected 1,000 young adults who lived in Boston, Massachusetts. 250 were exposed to sugary drinks, and among them, only 100 developed type 2 diabetes. Furthermore, 300 developed type 2 diabetes among individuals who were not exposed to sugary drinks. Set up the contingency table with the appropriate numbers and labels. The contingency table has been already filled with appropriate numbers and labels. Kindly review the video on contingency tables to learn how to fill the boxes with the correct numbers and labels. This is the second practice problem in which we will calculate the risk of developing type 2 diabetes among the exposed group. Risk in the exposed group is calculated as the following. A divided by A plus B. 100 represents the A group in terms of individuals who are exposed and develop the illness, and A plus B represents the whole exposed group. These are individuals who drink sugary drinks. When we do those calculations, we get 0 0.4. To interpret these results, we state individuals who drink sugary drinks have a 0 0.4 risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Or we can say individuals who are exposed to sugary drinks have a 0.4 risk of developing type 2 diabetes. This is the third practice problem in which we will calculate the risk of developing type 2 diabetes among the unexposed group. Risk in the unexposed group is calculated as the following, C divided by C plus D, in which we have 300 divided by 750, and that gives us 0.4. Individuals who do not drink sugary drinks have a 0.4 risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Another way to interpret this is individuals who are not exposed to sugary drinks have a 0.4 risk of developing type 2 diabetes. For the last problem, we will calculate the risk ratio of developing type 2 diabetes. To calculate the risk ratio, we took the relative risk 
in the exposed group divided by the relative risk in the unexposed group, and we have 1. To interpret this result, we state there is little difference in risk of developing type 2 diabetes among individuals who are exposed to sugary drinks when compared to individuals who are not exposed to sugary drinks. In the next video, I'll discuss how to use a contingency table to calculate rate ratios.